All right. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. And good afternoon, all the way from South Africa. It's really a privilege for me to be able to show our work that we are doing at Stellenbosch University on 3D concrete printing. So to start off with the presentation, I'll um, show you a brief introduction, then move on to the reinforcing strategy. So there are current strategies and then the ones that we are focusing on. So that's the missing link, fire resistance, seismic resistance, and then moving on to some considerations, including bond strength and then durability issues such as corrosion, and then a short conclusion. So it just wants to move. Okay. So why do we reinforce concrete? So this is a very easy question to answer, or hopefully for civil engineers and structural engineers, and some even classified as the near perfect marriage. <laughs> Um, but if we get to it, it's essentially we can summarize it as to resist large tensile forces or stresses, to facilitate ductile failure, which is obviously safer than brittle failure, which is almost instantaneous, to limit the influence and size of cracks. So that's if you think about water retaining structures, to provide confinement or seismic resistance, improve fire resistance rating of structures, and many, many others. So why should we reinforce? 3D print concrete, well, obviously for all the above reasons, but also to bridge weak interlay regions, which is a common phenomena in 3D printing. So due to the additive nature of printing, you have layers that don't typically fuse together 100%. So if you look at this picture on the right hand side, there's a structure there. Um, I think it's filled with water because it's water seeping through. So that should obviously and raise concerns if you think about the structural integrity of that structure. So this happens due to the increased permeability that is evident for between layers. Okay, and this increases as a function of the time between the deposition of successive layers. So if you look at this graph on the far left hand side, there's the direct tensile strength on the x-axis. So that's if it's just casted. And in this case, for this concrete, it was about 30 megapascals. And in the case where you test printed samples, so in direct um, tensile testing, after one hour, you'll see that it only has 1.5 megapascal bond strength. So that's about a 50% reduction if you have a one hour printing time gap. And obviously that should be a huge concern for engineers because you can get localized failing and that can compromise the structural integrity. So I just also want to point out that all the references are presented at the bottom of each slide. So if we look at the current strategies that are being used for reinforcing 3D printed concrete, it's in most instances quite project specific or object specific. So on the left top hand side, you have mesh reinforcing, which is the Swinburne group in Australia. So that's more for wall panels. Um, on the right hand side, you have the continuous cable reinforcing, which is the TUE group in Eindhoven. At the left bottom side, you have a um, topology optimized bridge, which is Gilian's work from Ghent University. And then the bottom right, you have external reinforcing systems developed by, I think that's Constantino's work from Italy. So there are various methods and it's evident that it's rather specific to the application. So in our case, we found that it is quite essential to have orthogonal reinforcing as a general reinforcing method for all printed objects. And that comprise of steel fibers that you include orthogonally. So essentially it bridge, bridges the interlayers, right? Um, in our case, we went with fibers. So we insert the fibers manually at this stage um, while we are printing the object. And we cut off the ends of the fibers because you can see it will leave a cavity if you look at that picture on the right, top right hand side. And then we test and the fibers have a tensile yield strength of 1.16 gigapascal, which is quite high. So then we tested in four point bending, as you can see in the left um, bottom corner here, we have the fibers aligned in the center. So this was just a test of ductility and not necessarily for strength. We would obviously have aligned it um, further away from the neutral axis. So we also um, tested it in this direction, which is the uh, orientation number three, because this is found to be the weakest in bending. 
So what we found is that the reflection softening post-peak behavior was evident, which obviously implies that it's more ductile. We have a slight increase in the strength and failure was due to pull out and not yielding of the fiber. So more detail of this work will be presented at the Digital Concrete Conference, which is now also um, will be held online and you're welcome to attend that for more details. So just as some supplemental work that I've recently also found from Arna Pero, he used a similar concept, but instead of fibers, he used nails. You can see you have um, normal nails and then rusted nails included at 45 degrees and cross-linked. And you can see in his instance, he got 52% increase in the flexural strength in the same O3 direction. And this has all to do with the diameter of obviously of the steel fibers and probably the bond of that's increased due to the corrosion. So there's a lot of potential here, and I think this is really something that needs more attention as a general uh, reinforcing strategy for 3D printed elements. So another benefit of including this orthogonal re um, reinforcing is for fire resistance. So we did some research on conventionally costed samples, which you can see on the left hand side at the top, and we heated the samples up and to about 500 degrees. And on the left hand side, you can see for costed samples that it just exploded into a lot of pieces um, because it's a high performance concrete. So the same for the same concrete, but just printed, you can clearly see it delaminated. So no explosive spoiling. And that although it could resist higher temperatures, um, you'll still get brittle failure. So, and it's something that we need to investigate. So essentially, we also included the reinforcing on the centroid and we heated it with the radiant gas panels. And then we tested it again in four point bending and also found that it got the flexion softening and it improved the flexural capacity post fire. So this is also work that will be presented at the digital um, concrete conference, I think early in July. So um, please attend that if you wanna see more of our results. Okay, so then we also looked at seismic resistance, which is in Cape Town where we are, we have some moderate um, seismic activity. So structural systems for multi-story buildings exposed to moderate seismicity. So essentially what you can see on the left hand side is uh, topology optimized uh, beams. So this is what we can produce with 3D printed concrete, which obviously reduces the mass while maintaining the stiffness. And consequently, um, you have a lower um, seismic demand so you have lower inertial forces imposed, which limits your base shear requirements. And this is all due to the freeform construction capabilities of 3D printing. So that you can, uh, it permits the manufacture of predetermined cavities, uh, allowing for placement of vertical reinforcement services, insulation, and many, many other things. So I'd just like to point out this is PhD work of one of my students that I'm showing you. So we are considering this three-story building, which has four shear panels or shear walls, um, nine meters tall, three meters wide. So which classifies it as a slender wall and bending dominates. So here's a prototype of one of the panels. You can see we have the boundary condition, the cavity, and then we have this infill where we can just slide this uh, printed wall panel over the vertical reinforcing. And then you can cause this um, cavities up with concrete. So just to show you what this looks like. All right, there it is. Okay, so on the bottom left hand side, you'll see this, this is the wall, um, the shear wall, and it comprises of about eight panels. And that's only because our printer is not capable of printing a, a wall that's nine meters tall. Um, so that's why we went with panels and the connections between the panels. So you have your reinforcing here on the right hand side, we can see the, the vertical reinforcement and then the horizontal reinforcement, which will be um, placed in situ while you're printing it. And then essentially just link all of these panels together to form the wall. And it should hopefully behave well. We can tell you that after about a year or two. Okay, then some considerations. So we did some tests on our concrete, a CT scanning test. And the left top hand side, you can see, um, this is a, a, a piece of a conventionally casted concrete sample. And the void is quite round and 
relatively large. Whereas if you look at a printed sample at the bottom picture, the voids are more smeared and longitudinal. So there's quite a distinct difference between the void shape and size if you look at the printed versus the casted sample. And additionally, you'll also see at the interlayer position over here, it seems as if the, the voids are linked, which then increases the permeability. So a study done by um, Brand and Liu, um, it's also from Zurich, um, you can see in the top right-hand corner, uh, did some uh, micro XRF mapping of the chlorides. And at the interlay, interlay regions, you can see there's um, a lot of migration of the chlorides that goes up into the, the layer. So this really leads us to the question as um, what effect does the interlay have on the corrosion rate of rebar? And also what, um, what's the influences of the void size and shape? on the bonding between the concrete and the rebar. This is just what we should also investigate in some future research. So to conclude, um, application oriented rebar strategies is mostly required for 3D printed concrete elements. There's no one size fits all. The orthogonal reinforcing as we show here the missing link is a general sort of type of reinforcing strategy that improves fire performance, ductility or ductile failure. Uh, reducing even severe anisotropy, so there's a lot of um, benefits. And then also freeform and topology optimized um, printed panels, manufacturing to fit over vertical seismic rebar. So this is a, um, a method that we can, can consider for seismic zones um, in the future. And then just some general considerations, obviously it's the bonding strength and the corrosion rate, as I just mentioned. So thank you very much, and um, the floor is open for questions.